So it means that the exercise of Parliament's legislative power is not just in passing the bill, but in getting the accent by the President. That is 1061. I read again. The power of Parliament to make laws shall be exercised by bills passed by Parliament and accented to by the President. So that is the mode of exercising Parliament's legislative power. Nana Kufodo. What you do? The puppet that got away before the revolutionaries could evict him. Nonetheless. <laughs> Good to see everybody today. Like, subscribe, click that notification button so when I get information out, you can get information in. Sam George still exposed him for the puppet that he is before the elections take place in Ghana. So this is going to leave a mark on some voters in the up and coming elections. You know the LGBTQIA++ XYZ are you going to be my friend law The that Sam George in the parliament passed that a coup for Odu was supposed to sign or not sign? Give us a hint. What you going to do? What you going to say? What you going to do? I don't know. Well, he hasn't done anything. Akufa Du hasn't done anything, and Sam George called him out on it again today in a very kind way. But I would like you all to grab a drink, and let's take a look, and we're going to dissect this and uh, see what the puppet masters are up to. Cheers. For a while, I've chosen not to talk about it because, I mean, it's before the courts and I've left it. But yesterday, the, the issue came up again because of the hearing. We're expecting ruling on the 17th. 108 is at the heart of the substantive case that we haven't gone into. The Attorney General is actually a respondent in the case because the respondents are the Speaker of Parliament and the Attorney General. Let me be clear that 106 of the Constitution is titled, the heading of 106, Mode of Exercising Legislative Power. So, Randy, 106 basically talks about how Parliament can exercise its powers as the legislative arm of government. And it says, this is very interesting to read, 106.1. The power of Parliament to make laws shall be exercised by bills passed by Parliament and critically and accented to by the president. So it means that the exercise of parliament's legislative power is not just in passing the bill, but in getting the accent by the president. That is 1061. I read again. The power of parliament to make laws shall be exercised by bills passed by parliament and accented to by the president. Now that is a very precise and clear reading of the law. It's actually written in terms that are pretty straightforward. So what I'm hearing is that the president has a timetable to assent or assent mean formally agree or refuse to agree to this bill within two weeks. And if there is refusal, the president must submit in writing back to the speaker what that refusal is. So where is it? I'm not sure completely how the laws work in Ghana, but in most countries, if you're given a legal document that says you have to respond within a time frame, then not doing so comes with penalties, right? So what kind of penalties apply to the government officials who don't uphold the laws? Some being their own laws. How is he getting away with it? So who's actually holding the president accountable for not fulfilling his mandates in office? Well, even Stevie Wonder should be able to see what's going on here. But first, let's check out where Nana Akufa do was hanging out before he was given his piece of legislation by the Ghanaian parliament. Oh, that's right. He was getting orders from Joe and Kamala and Blinken. And we don't know exactly what orders they were, but let's just take a guess. Let's throw a conspiracy theory out there. <laughs> it goes like this. If you attack the LGBTQIA++, your funds will be cut off. That's my conspiracy theory. And do you know what the difference between a conspiracy theory and the truth is? In this case, about five months. Then you'll know. Exhibit A. A meeting with no transparency to your people. Behind closed doors. With the most aggressive LGBTQ indoctrination leader that has ever combed the earth. So this, uh, this is a very good occasion. But it's a particularly good occasion because we greatly uh, value uh, Ghana's leadership and your leadership uh, in West Africa. 
uh, the important efforts on regional security. Um, we're strong partners, including on the uh, UN Security Council, which we greatly value, uh, partners for democracy and security uh, in, in West Africa. We have deep and historical ties. Um, our official bilateral relationship began in 1957. So that is the mode of exercising Parliament's legislative power. It then proceeds, because it had in 1061, stated that Parliament's ex legislative power is not exercised either or, but end. The, the, the word used there is end, meaning both the passage of the bill and the accent by the president is what shows the executive power. It then gives you the scenarios where the president may seek as the executive to interfere in the exercise of legislative power. That is where the president decides not to accent to a bill that has been transmitted to him. So it then lets you know that until you have the accent of the president to a bill, the process is not completed. Because it says that when you pass the bill, send it to the president in 1067, <coughs> where a bill is passed by parliament, where a bill passed by parliament is presented to the president for accent, he shall signify within seven days after the presentation to the speaker that he accents to the bill or that he refuses to accent to the bill unless the bill has been referred by the president to the council of state under article 90 of this constitution welcome very very warm to Ghana, to Accra and to Jubilee House it's good to see you again from the first time that we met uh, two years ago at the White House you and I had extensive and constructive conversations about the importance of the relationship between the United States and Ghana we think that your visit here is a very clear signal that the United States shares the same sentiments as we do. I thank you for the friendship that you have offered the United States. I bring you greetings from President Joe Biden, and I look forward to uh, the conversation we will continue to have in the days and years to come. So it then means that the accent of the president is what then ends the legislative exercise of legislative power. The president can choose not to accent. It then means that Parliament's legislative power has not been exercised completely. Because then it then says that in the case where the President in 8, 1068, where the President refuses to assent the bill, he shall, within 14 days after his refusal, A, state in a memo to the Speaker, any specific provision. So he can't just cut blind say, I refuse. He must then refuse with a memo to the Speaker, stating the basis of which for, for his refusal and it can't just be something extraneous to the bill he must state what provisions of the bill he disagrees with and then it doesn't end there it says any specific provisions of the bill which in his opinion should be reconsidered by parliament including his recommendations for amendments so it then means that when the president says i i don't accent to this bill or i'm refusing to accent within 14 days he must do a memo to the speaker Stating what is wrong with the so, bill. So, so the point, the point that you make is that from what you read, yes, the six, the seven, and the eight. Yes, Parliament's legislative function cannot be complete unless there's a presidential assent. Yes, because because in the event that the president refuses to assent and he gives reasons and he has issues with particular provisions, yes, Parliament will have to. Continue its work again. That is captured in 1069. Yes. Parliament shall reconsider a bill taking into account the comments made by the president so, so, or the council of so, states. So what it means is that if you read the entirety of 106, yes. until there's a presidential assent, the legislative work of parliament is it's not, not complete. complete. Now, I've never been anybody to put words into somebody's mouth, like anybody, but... What it looks like to me is happening that nobody's actually saying is Nana Kufodu could sign it or do something with it, is supposed to do something with this bill for the Ghanaian people as his job as president, but he's checked out. Akufodu has checked out, bro. He don't care anymore. The only thing he cares about is his relationship with the United States of America. In the meetings that went on behind closed doors that are not allowing him to sign 
anything off on this bill. He's going to try to push it off and push it off as long as he can, get out of office and head to France, England, wherever he wants to go. But he probably isn't going to stay in Ghana. Just my thought. And especially now, I can see why Sam George wouldn't want to let any cats out of the bag or anything like that because of what's going on in Kenya. We don't want to see that happen in Ghana because it's very, makes for a dysfunctional country. Uh, however, with what's going on in Kenya, it's probably the best thing that's ever happened to that country. So just my thoughts. Let me know what yours are down below and uh, we will see you on the next one. I just want to say thank you all for watching no matter what happens. Our God reigns. The Lord Jesus Christ reigns over this land. He has got his hand on Africa right now in such a, a, an amazing way that it's just being lifted up out of the ashes and it's turning into beauty. So I just want to say thank you all for letting me be a part and do what I can over here on this side uh, to see you guys and see, see Africa prosper and, and bloom and blossom like they've been doing within the last couple of years. So one love and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.